We didn't record. We didn't start on time last week recording. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. We are Ooh, back with yes, our podcast. Are. This is episode 10. Woo! We getting up there, We getting up there. Yeah. Got a lot of the interesting folks. Yeah, another special guest for you this week. Oh, yes, we do. This topic is going to be interesting. It's something different. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody in the podcast world. Right. So, so we're going to jump in here and uh, read this biography, and then we're going to introduce our, you know, bring our guests on. All right. Today we have Mr. Jason Marzette. He's the VP of the Century Gun Club. Jason was introduced to the sport of trap shooting in 1968 as a trap setter, commonly known as a trap boy at Century Gun Club. He started shooting in 1971. Then he started competing in the 1973 in 1973 as a junior in the WSTA he joined the uh, amateur trap association in 1979 after spending 6 years in the US army he returned to win the NSTA a national handicap while studying for the police academy he became a Detroit police officer in 1987 which left no time for competing he retired in 2013 and returned to the sport in 2015 after being away for, from it for 26 years. My goodness, that's starting all over again, Jason. Since returning, I have won events in Michigan, Ohio, Maryland, California, and Missouri. This year, I was named to the 2020 State of Michigan Men's All-State Team. Wonderful. He graduated from Cooley High School in Detroit. He graduated from the U.S. Army Transportation uh, School in Virginia and Wayne Community College, Wayne McCune Community College. Uh, the Century Gun Club was founded by Afro-American businessmen in 1946. It is located in Carleton, Michigan, 12 miles south of Belleville. Century Gun Club is Michigan's oldest and now only African-American owned and operated trap shooting club and it is the second oldest gun club in monroe county there are eight other gun clubs in monroe county that, that offer trap shooting in 1975 century added an additional trap field giving it five and making century the largest trap club in monroe county all right how you I'm doing right, jason trap shooter yeah i'm good good evening everybody good good yeah. okay now now <laughs> This is different. Yes, it is. For us that don't that aren't aren't uh, indoctrinated, if you will, or uh, aware of of trap shooting, and even those who are aware of of, of black folks. Thing. I've only seen it in movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think you done froze again on me. Yeah, there you go. You back. Yeah. So, real quick, because one thing we do with all our guests is we we talk about you went to Cooley High School. Yes. So so Detroit Public School System again. And doing something that's this would be considered different for us. So, so we're not gonna play around with this. Uh, well, you, we're gonna talk about this, and we're gonna talk about all, all your, your history and, and, and the things that you've done. So, let's jump into this to this trap shooting thing. Tell us a little bit about the sport of trap shooting. Well, the the sport of trap shooting um, dates all the way back to the late eighteen hundreds. Wow. Um, and it came to the U.S. from England um, in the late 1800s. Um, the first known competitive trap shoot in the United States was roughly in 1899, and it, it was in Cleveland. Okay. Um, the sport itself is simul it simulates a bird hunter who's flushed a bird and has to shoot the bird down, you know, with, with his gun. Okay. So you have in trap. And the targets have evolved from actually live birds to glass balls to what we have now, which is a clay target. Um, it's made out of a hard pitch clay. It's four inches in diameter, and it travels at about 42 miles an hour when it okay. comes out of the target machine. All right. All right. So um, the Amateur Trap Shooting Association started in 1901. And it's the governing body for all U.S. trap shooting okay. from 
the continental U.S., Canada, all the way south to Brazil. Wow. That's, that's their jurisdiction. You oh. have competitors from all over the world. Wow. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a very popular sport, and it's steadily growing in most areas. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, and like my bio said, I was introduced to the sport in, you know, 68, when my father started at Century Gun Club. Oh, okay. You know, I got to know the founders and, you know, they took me under their wings and showed me up this thing. And, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. All right. It's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun. Right. Well, and, and that's interesting. And you so, know. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So it is, uh, it has evolved um, to where you have uh, competitions uh, throughout the uh, United States, and like I said, Canada, as far away as Brazil. And in August every year, they have what's known as the Grand American. Okay. The Grand American is the World Series of Trap Shoot. Okay. It runs for two weeks, and you'll have thousands of competitors, and you know they're they're competing on a on a re really really high level. Okay. Right. So if I can stop interrupt you just a second. So I see that uh, in high level and, and you were named to the state of Michigan all state team this year. Yes. So that so that that, that means that you shoot at a high level, too. <laughs> yes, that 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 means I was um, this for 2020. There was 12 men that were named to the men's team. Okay. And that was the 12 guys that had the highest average throughout the state. All right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Where were you on that 12? Where, where did you fall? What number? Um, I, I fell right around uh, seven, I think it was. Seven, <clears throat> six or seven. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, not, not yeah, bad. Yeah, not so, bad for picking it back up. I wasn't at the top, but there was a few down below. <laughs> <laughs> well, since, since it's the top, the top 12, there's a whole lot below you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So, so right. So you, so you, you started in sixty and you know, when it started shooting in seventy one. Uh, you won a tournament in seventy three, and uh, well, you competed in tournaments in seventy three, and you went away, went to the service, came back, went to the police force. What made you get back in trap shooting? It was. Up until I went into the to the service, it was something I did on a regular basis. I really enjoyed it, and um, I, was, I came out of the service, and I was I was still anxious to compete. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I was still compete. I started competing in the uh, in the WSTA, and I guess I could give you a little history of that. Okay. The uh, NSTA, the National Trap and Skeet Association was founded in 1950 by African Americans. Okay. And it was divided into East and West. The West was WSTA and the East was ESTA. Mm -hmm. So in the West, you had Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, Missouri. And in the East, you had New York, um, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and part of Ohio. Okay. Part of Ohio was in the East and part of Ohio was in the West. And these were all made up of African-American clubs because African-Americans were excluded from competing in the 80s. Yeah, okay. So they never created done their in own uh, organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. in fact, this past Labor Day was the 70th anniversary of the NSTA. Oh, okay, cool. So you had a, you had so a tournament? I did a lot of NSTA yeah. shooting. Okay, good. So, uh, when did they start allowing African Americans to, to compete with the other folks, <laughs> if you will? 1961. 61. And actually, this past, uh, this past Labor Day, Monday, I was talking to a gentleman by the name of Wally Davis down in Maryland for uh, in, in STA. And he was telling me, he was telling me he was one of the first guys to get into the ATA back in 1961. Oh, wow. He had tried to get in the ATA 
he said in 1958, and he went to an, uh, an ATA event, filled out the membership application, and they told him he needed to be endorsed by five life member of the Amateur Trap Shoot Association. Yeah. So he said, well, he said to himself, where am I going to find five guys who are life members say, I'm good enough to be in this organization? Right. He couldn't. Right, right. You know, and he tried for three years, and it took, actually, it took a sitting senator to get him and five other African Americans into the ATA. Wow. So, I mean. And that was in 1961. So, but, it, I mean, it, it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter what the sport is. They exclude us from it. When they when they could get away. Yes. With yes. Wow. And so so you met right, you, right. You, you met somebody who really who really was a history maker, if you will. Yes. And and, and now, um, one of our own very own Detroit residents, uh, Franklin Darrell Hayes. Mm -hmm. He became the first African American vice president of the Amateur Trap Shooting Association two years ago. Two years ago. Yes, in and he is the only African American on the executive committee of the Amateur Trap Shooting Association. The struggle continues. It never ends, though, does it? <laughs> but but but, oh, but, no. but I, I guess I guess they don't want too many us around them with guns. Yeah, no, that's what I said. <laughs> they know how to yeah. use them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and you know, and, and that's and that's just it because I've I've traveled, you know, throughout. The, the Midwest and out as far as California. And, you know, I've been, I've never felt unwelcome. Okay. The last time I didn't feel welcome was actually here in Michigan. And that was, I think it was right around 75 or 76. Yeah. And I went to one of Michigan's oldest gun clubs, Birmingham Gun Club. It was founded mm -hmm. in 1901. Mm -hmm. And I went up there to compete. And when I first got there, you know, they were pointing to the back door where the workers was going in. I thought, I'm not here to work. I'm here to shoot. Right, right. You know, but, you know, once once you get there and and they see that, you know, you know what you're doing, then they, you know, they, they welcome you with open arms. But we're such a, in this sport, we're still such a minority. You go to any major event, and if there are seven of us, that's a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it, it could be, it could be five, six, 700 competitors. And a matter of fact, just recently, uh, June 23rd of this year, I went to the Ohio State shoot for the preliminary opening event. And I beat 320 other competitors. Ooh. And I was the only African American in that event. Wow. wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, you know, I'm always I always promote the sport because you know we like to see more of us, you know, in it. Right. Yeah, because like, right I've now, never. I'm just saying. I'm I've only seen it on television. Yeah, I've and never you know, really it's a in a movie. It's a, yeah. it's a sport. Yeah, it's it's a gender neutral sport. So you know, it could be men, it could be women, the youngsters mm -hmm. as you know as young as ten years old. Right. And you so, know. so let's talk about that. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. Uh, like I say, it, it, that's a hard road. And now I see where the other issue comes in because you and I, as you and I talked, uh, you know, previously that uh, you were, you were looking into trying to get uh, uh, something going on with the school, with, with the schools to get African-American uh, young folks in so, there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and actually in 2000, the year 2000, um, the high school clay Tar league started, over in Minnesota. And, and and actually in 2001, it actually took off. So now it's it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And it's high schools all across the country, except in certain areas where, you know, mostly African American yeah, people live. Right. They they don't have those teams. Yeah. And you know, you it's a it's a you know, if you have a, a student that you know may not be interested in playing basketball or, right. or football. Exactly. Right. And mind you, this is 
this year is the safest high school. They they promote it as the safest high school sport. You never see an ambulance sitting on the sideline <laughs> at a major trap shoot. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Just, as long as everybody it's, it's, it's the, the right direction. High school sport, but yeah. But getting back to that, you know the. The league itself has scholarships, plus there's over 500 colleges and universities in this country that offer scholarships in trap shooting. Wow. wow. It's an Olympic sport. Yeah, you're right. It sure, see. Is. It sure is. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, and the the, the high school um, trap league or the clay tar league, you know, it it's not really cost prohibitive it actually doesn't cost the school anything in order to form a team mm -hmm. you just have to have permission to use the school's name okay they, they like you to offer a letter and program yeah you know none of the none of the equipment ever goes to the school so you know the kids don't bring the guns and the ammo and all of that stuff to school <laughs> it's it's an after school activity just like everything else only it's done you right. know at a track okay um, you know, you just supervise, you have, you have coaches. The minimum is a uh, one coach for 10 participants. But me personally, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to, you know, if you had 10, I would say three coaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's, it's better just that you them more, you'll be able to give them more of your attention. Right, right. Wow. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a great sport. And that being said, you have the high school. Uh, Clay Target League, and then the Amateur Trap Shooting Association, ATA, also has a program called AIM. And AIM stands for Academic Integrity and Marksmanship. Okay. And it goes up through college. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you compete on the, you can start at the high school level, compete on the college level, you know, and then take it, you know, take it from there. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. You gotta have a good eye for that, though. <laughs> So that's the yeah they go pretty fast. Right. So uh, have you have you had opportunity to uh, speak with any young folks about it to see if to judge whether they, uh, there's an interest there? There there's quite there yeah there is quite a bit because um, every every once in a while we'll have people um, some people come visit our club okay and they you know and then they get to try it out and I've had quite a few youngsters you know that like it, but they just don't really know how to get started in it. And then, you know, once again, you have to get the parents acclimated yeah. or, or feeling better about, you know, guns. Because when, mm -hmm. you, when you speak about guns in our community, first thing right. people think about shooting other people. Right. Yes. You know, right. And that's right. not and becoming what marksman. this is all about. You know what I'm becoming right. marksman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, and it's a way, it's a yeah. way, uh, like you say, to get them acclimated to it and learn and learn how to properly handle a gun, but know that every time when you got a gun, you ain't shooting at somebody. <laughs> Cause, cause right, right. Know. And right. see, right. and um, if you, you know, yeah, to, and to start a high school team, um, you need a minimum of five people, but they also have to go through a safety program. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have two different ones they can go through. Um, both of them, like the hunter safety program that the state puts on, mm -hmm. you know, you do the classroom work online and then you go to a facility, and do the practical and you get a certificate. Okay. You have to have that certificate in order to, to participate. Okay. And then once you do that, you know, um, the, the league takes care of, you know, accident insurance, liability insurance. So, you know, in the event something happens, you're covered. Right. You know? Right. And okay. so it, after that, it's just a matter of getting, you know, getting the people on board. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're, you're able to make some head rolls in, uh, uh, into that. Uh, uh, Especially now that you're on the podcast and you're out there in the media <laughs> world. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure yeah, you've got quite and a few listeners. If I may, you know, if, if, if someone... Yeah, if someone out there listening wants to, you know, wants to know a little bit more you know, they can um, either Google Michigan Clay Target League or just go directly to their website. And there's a whole list of frequently asked questions. There are some videos on how to start a team, you know, 
what the school's part of it is, uh, you know, what they what they help with coaching. Um, and our, and basically what you need is, you know, a facility to, to shoot at. And I say there's uh, their schools, Gross Hill was the last one that I knew of that joined the league. It joined about two years ago. And they shoot at the Wayne County Sports. Um, Airport High School, uh, Lance Cruz North, um, you know, Richmond. Don't sound uh, in the city. That's Roseville. What I'm they all have high school trap teams. Well, Rose okay. Island, right. kind of. You know, well, they're, they're all around us, but not here. Right, yeah. right. And, 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 and I know when we, we, when we talked last week, you were telling me that uh, Gross Eel was, to, uh, did they have an African American on there at one time or no? No. 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 So um, I, I believe I've only seen, if, if my memory is correct, I've only seen two African-American high school students on any, any team. Mm -hmm. And getting back to that, they have the state high school championships here in Michigan mm -hmm. at the uh, Michigan Trap Shooting Association in Mason. And then they have the national. Um, last year, there was a thousand high school trap teams. Wow. There's about 4,000 kids up there in Mason. You know, and not one black. If you, if you counted the, the African Americans that w were participating but not working there, yeah. you, you probably have, you know, a bunch of fingers left over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I don't know. I'm like, you know, how do we get our children interested? It's like, it was like anything. Oh we, they got to they gotta know that it's there. Yeah. But um, it's hitting yeah, everybody yeah. else. They just think it's a. I mean, do we think it's just a a, a, diff, a cultural sport? You know, <laughs> like polo. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you know, at at, at one point, you know, at one point yeah. here in Michigan, we had um, Century Gun Club, the African American Friendship uh, Gun Club was African American. Uh, we've really only had two here in Michigan, but then you had Pioneer in Toledo, you had uh, Green Tower in Toledo, you had Dayton, you had clubs in Dayton, Cincinnati. So there was probably more than a dozen, you know, within, say, an hour, hour and a half drive of anywhere in Detroit, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, and then when you count the other clubs, you know, yeah. um, like like right now, what what you read, Monroe County has has more gun clubs than any place in the country. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. You know, but we're you know. Well, that's in surprise because they like to shoot here in Michigan, <laughs> and not just yeah, us. yeah, yeah. They like to shoot. I'm a friend of mine. He he shoots and he yeah. Shoots. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, seriously. So <laughs> you threw you threw me off of that one. I know. So 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 you you're, you're the okay. So you at your club, you the vice president, right? Which, yes. Which is which, which, yes. All right. Well, there we go. And and you, you got a Facebook page. I was out there nosing around. I see you got a Facebook uh, page. Yes, I got a Facebook page. Also, uh, Century Gun Club has two Facebook pages. Okay. You have Century Gun Club and you have Century Trap and Skeet Club. They're okay. both the same yeah. club. Yeah. Um, that's how we kind of get our information out. Um, okay. I'm not only the vice president, I'm also the ATA liaison for okay. the club. Actually, I'm working for two clubs. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. And, uh, you know, we host Trap the, uh, Association. Okay. Yes. You know, and to join the Amateur Trap Shooting Association, it's twenty dollars a year for due. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, that's not bad. And, you you were about to say something? Did you yeah. Did you host in that some event that you? Yeah, had? we uh, this this past uh, past July, we we hosted a um, we hosted a a fight against cancer event okay. in conjunction with the uh, Gamma Phi Delta sorority. Okay. To raise some money for the American cancers. Oh, okay. you know, and it, it went over, you know, really, really good. 
really, really well. Okay. Good. Good. So, you know, it's, it's not like we're in our own little bubble. We try to reach out and, you know, and I encourage people to come out and visit. Yeah. So, <laughs> excuse me. So there's a website as well, right? For the Century Golf Club. Yes. Yes. CenturyGunClub.com. Yeah. I said golf, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> and on the website, you can see uh, photos, uh, calendar of events. Okay. Wonderful. Right. I would, uh, yeah. You know, I was, other little information, you know. Right. I was nosing around and I saw back in, was it July? You had a ladies' range day at the club? Yes. Yes. So, how did um, I? Well, that, that, I didn't have a whole lot to do with that. So there's a, there's a, a, a club that started up here in Detroit called uh, Black Bottom Gun Club. Yeah, I saw that. They don't have a home, you know, they, and they're, they're, um, they're mostly uh, gun shooter, shooter. Mm -hmm. And so they asked us to, you know, help them out. Because they, they normally meet um, the second and fourth Saturday. I think the second and fourth Saturday okay. of every month, firing line, gun range in out in Westland. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and so um, you know, they talked to our president, uh, Richard Ford, and he invited them to come out. And then they put together Ladies Range Day. And that was designed to get more ladies um, acclimated, if you will, to handling mm -hmm. firearms. Yeah. You know, so they shot, shot handguns. Um, I gave a I gave a class on shooting that because you know, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I have I have trap classes on a fairly regular basis. Okay. Where I go through the fundamentals of, of shooting trap because it, it's a skill okay. sport. You got to have good hand eye coordination. Because your hands got to move, your eyes are moving. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I said, it does sound interesting, though. I, I was like, dang, a lot of us ladies could come out there and uh, try that out. I'm well, I, yeah, you. I know a few who. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, last that. fall, we had some dignitaries out. Uh, the uh, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans, he came out and did a try. Him and his wife, uh, Reverend Wendell Anthony, and his wife came out and they gave it a try. You know, um, Anthony Adams was out there, the former, you know, yeah. deputy mayor. He came out and they were all impressed, you know, for when they was impressed that the place was even there and has been there, you know, for so long without anybody knowing it. Right. They say mm -hmm. they didn't know up there. But, um, hey, do they give a psych you know, test? With back these, uh... in the 60s, 70s, you know, a lot of the, a lot of those who of Detroit would, would be out there. Right. Mm, okay. Well, you know that's like that's like a lot of stuff that uh that the, old, the, the folks the bygone generation did that didn't necessarily translate down to to us some of us if you will yeah because if it wasn't for you I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gave it to, to sport a second thought <laughs> I'm telling you because so. you know we only turn <laughs> on when they doing so. uh, the swim the, the uh, dance we don't tell I I, I get, that's really beyond me, <laughs> but I'm really oh, interested. Yeah, yeah. In well, and you know, uh, after after their experience, I think uh, Andy Adams, he he kind of equated trap shooting as like, you know what, this is golf with a gun. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. So it, I don't. It is. Uh, yeah. The the whole way you talked about the way the sport has transitioned from mm -hmm. uh, us us not being allowed to being allowed, just the time frame is almost exactly the same as golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because and actually um this year, well actually because of the uh COVID nineteen, I think they postponed it till next year. But um we're gonna have first African American inducted into the National Cap Shooting Hall of Fame. Oh wow. There's a couple of them locally, like we have one in, in Michigan in the state uh hall of fame. Mm -hmm. And I was actually surprised when I went to Missouri, they had all their Hall of Famers up there, and there was only one. And he was inducted in the late 30s, early 40s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wow. thought that I thought that was awesome because you know yes. I'm like back in. Right. You know, 
He really had to be good. It, it was, I was be surprised to even let him on the ground without a broom in him. <laughs> I know. Right. He probably was shooting Master's dinner. <laughs> I got good at that. Well, well maybe, maybe, when I, <laughs> maybe he snuck out there with the broom and had a gun with him in the broom <laughs> and showed him. Yeah, 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 exactly. Wow, oh, I'm telling you. You know, but that's what I was saying. Do they have a, a psych test for uh, in the safety part? <laughs> a psych test. <laughs> they probably asked you a couple questions. I was like, so yeah. what? What? How, what? What? What does the season run? What time frame? Um, this the season normally starts here in, in April oh. and goes all the way. Well, our club open up in April and we close in November. November. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to stay open year round. But because of, you know, low participation, it just wasn't cost effective mm -hmm. to keep the lights and heat on. Well, we keep the lights, but the building hit, you know, and all that. Right. But the general, generally the season um, here starts in full swing. In April. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of leagues that run through the winter, you know, if you want. If you want to shoot the winter, but, you know, it's a sport that you can shoot around. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I know you, yeah. Cause my daughter went through her training. They, they had them out there in January in Chicago, outside. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Century, Century uh, was just allowed into the um, Monroe County Constitution Club's travel league. Uh, this will be our second, sec third year, third year in the, in the league. Okay. Because we didn't have enough participants. You had to have a minimum of five. We have five traps okay. until recently. Okay. So, um, and that, that league actually starts in January. They shoot once a month from January to September. Okay. So, so each club gets on one league day. Right. So you said it was just a competition Labor Day? Was it just competition? Yes, it just yes. That was the uh, the NSTA National. It was held in uh, Waldorf, Maryland, over the Labor Day weekend. And did Did you participate? I shot on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. How, how so did you I fit? shot. Uh, I should have had a well, I fair better, but I didn't fare too bad. I think the best I did was probably first place. Say that again. In uh, in one of the events. Okay. Yeah. I, say, I think that my best finish probably fourth. Okay, fourth. Mm -hmm. um, but one of our other members, uh, Charles Woods, he lives in Toledo. Mm -hmm. uh, he won the handicap event on Saturday, and he won one of the other events on uh, Sunday. Okay. So 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 y'all so was y'all was Century, represented. Century still made it strong. Yeah, well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's real good. So you say sometimes y'all shoot live birds. What type of birds no, are them? That's when they first started doing it. Oh, oh no, that that was, was, that was say, way girl. back when the when, the when it first started. first started. Yeah, okay. I'm just you know, say, and what? and that that's yeah, yeah. So now you know the <laughs> that and that that goes to some of the, the terminology that's still used today. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the targets are you know. Oftentimes, just referred to as clay pigeons because they mm -hmm. used to shoot real pigeons. Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. right. You know, when you when, when the shooter's ready for his target, he would call pull, and that was a signal for them to open the uh, you mm -hmm. know, the cage and let the bird mm -hmm. out, which called a trap. That's where it gets named. Trap. Okay. The bird would be in a trap. You open, you yell pull. They open the trap and the bird flies out. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, all right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, they were shooting Ooh. birds at the, uh, what, what's that play? Uh, well, they uh, shoot uh, deer, uh, so I don't know. What's the ASPC or whatever it is? They, they'd be all over them. <laughs> <laughs> Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They, they would be all over them. They won't even let you that wear is, a fur coat, so you know they ain't let you shoot no animals. That's very interesting. I'm glad you said something about the ladies. Yeah, yeah. The ladies. Pizza, we, pizza be everywhere. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pizza. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, they yeah, they they wouldn't they wouldn't be going for none of that. Yeah, no, that's right. right. So <laughs> so 
I'm, I'm looking at this. So you say that now Century is the oldest and not only African American owned and operated trap shooting club. Uh, that's in Michigan, or that that's just in Michigan, right? Did, I'm sorry. Say it again. Did you, your club is the oldest. I'm looking at. Uh, oh, Michigan's the oldest and now only. So it's only only one in Michigan. Yes, and, and, and the oldest one in Michigan. Yeah. So Michigan had Century Gun Club and Friendship Gun Club. Friendship right. was in Smith Creek going up toward Port Huron. But they closed up oh, two years ago. Okay. Uh, I know it's been more than five years because when I came back to the sport, they were closed. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's so let's let's veer from there for a minute. On this show, we always ask uh, our guests. The name, of, the name of the podcast is Things My Mother Never Told Me. And so we always ask our guests, is there something that you've, that you've encountered, you discovered uh, in your travels, your journey, and through life that your mother didn't prepare you for or didn't tell you about that you might have wished you would have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> We ain't that, trying to that, we not trying one. to bash moms now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It, it, it ain't a bash on mothers. It's just a, you know. No, no, no. Uh, let's see. Something my my mother never told me. Hmm. Mm. I'm drawing a blank here. That's okay. Yeah, uh -huh. that's okay because you know some people didn't have one. Some people had a uh, did a one one young lady, young lady did a spin on it and uh, said her mother over prepared her. <laughs> 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 well, she blamed it on her father actually, but that's, uh -huh. that's another story. <laughs> and uh, so the, the idea is is that is that like in my case the reason why we came up with the title is because I realized when thinking of a name that that from the time my mother passed until I came up with this title, so many things had transpired between those, that date, those days. That, right, right. That is, there's just no way she could have possibly told me about it. Uh-huh. Just couldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something your mother probably never told you. I'm guessing. Did she, okay. tell, did she tell you, did she tell you about trap shooting? Uh, no. <laughs> but my dad did. It, 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 <laughs> you know, my, my, my mom and dad, they they were uh they 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 were always full of one liners. Uh, so, so how did your mom feel about you trap shooting? Oh, she was she was all for it. She oh was, really? You know, she, matter of fact, she was she was a fixture at Century Gun Club. Okay. What? Okay. Uh, yeah. She, you know, she did it a little. She she shot a little bit. Okay. Um. So. But uh, but yeah, she was a, she was a, a fixture out there. Okay. Well, that's good. And matter of fact, she she held she was on the board of directors for a while. She had she held a couple of offices with the, uh, with with the club. Oh, she was all in. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she ain't mind her son shooting. <laughs> so, oh no, no. She was, uh, she she was she was all for it. Yeah, well, well I'm, I'm glad we had mentioned the the financial part about it, then, because like you said, it don't cost that much. And like you said, the, the guns and all that stuff is provided by the club, correct? Uh, well, you know, if you if if you come out to the club and you want to try it, somebody's going to hand you gun. Okay. Now, the, the thing about trap guns is they can get pretty doggone expensive. Yes. So, um, you know, they're, they're and, and people always ask me, you know, well, what's the difference between the, you know, trap gun and the gun my dad or my granddad hunted? With? Right. You know, and I said, well, the, the big difference is in the construction of the gun itself. Okay. You know, you go out to buy a hunting gun and you might pay three or four hundred dollars. Well that gun is only designed to shoot five or six times a year at that at best. Okay. When you shoot in a trap gun, when I go to practice, I'll shoot 
a hundred to two hundred mm -hmm. rounds, a, you know, a, in practice a day. Wow. You know, when you go to a tournament, you might shoot a five hundred. Mm. So you got to have a guy going to stand to that, you know. Right. That kind Type of, of use. Yeah, that yeah, use. That's yeah. A lot. And then you want it to look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got It's got to look good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, gotta gotta look good. Yeah, right. everything. So everything we do. you know, I always encourage people, you know, before you jump in, you know, all the way up to your to hips, you know, come up and you know try it, see if you like it. Yeah, make yes. sure. And mm -hmm. then you know, some somebody or you know, even I will recommend a good entry level. You don't have to go top of the line, mm -hmm. you know. And when I say top of the line, you go to a trap tournament and see a rack full of trap guns that's north of twenty thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. And you're just sitting. Mm. You know, you go to the Grand American if you want to try one, the company, you know, manufacturer's rep will hand you, you know, a fifteen, twenty thousand dollar shot and tell you, go out there and buy it. Mm. You know, if you like it, we'll talk about you buying. It. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's like buying a used car. I mean, yeah, well, uh, people can't find them putting that yeah. kind of money into a gun, but it's right. real easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all sports cars, I tell you. Well, see, see, it's all the equipment. It's, it sounds more and more like golf every minute. Yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what's yeah, the first one like in that golf, tournament? You make that initial investment, you know. And you, you don't run out and buy it every every week or you know every every season. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you, and know, start, you might tweak it a little bit. That's, right. And start out with a with an inexpensive one and, and, and if if it work if it worked for you, then then move your way up. Mm hmm Then then you want to start looking good for real. <laughs> right. So yeah. yeah. So that's 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 crazy. So when you, you say, okay, you mentioned practicing. So how often do you practice? Um, I try to practice at least once a week. If I can, I'll get two two days a week. Okay. But I I usually try to practice at least once once a week. And so when you go up there, do you do you, they have to pay every time you go up there? It's a small fee. Yes. Yes. Um, between three and six dollars for every okay. twenty five. So depending do they, on, do they you know, depending on where you go. Okay. Do they rent the guns? Very few places will rent the gun, but like I said, if you go to a club and you want to try it, somebody will just leave you there. Like, hey, okay. Mm -hmm. Give this a try. Um, and I'll tell beginners, you know, you, in this sport, you'll be your own worst critic because nobody will tell you you're your best shot. They will encourage you to keep at it, mm -hmm. and you will get better. But the the other thing is using someone else's gun. You're going to reach a certain point till you need your own. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The gun yeah. to fit you, just like fitting golf clubs. Your gun has to fit you. If it don't fit, you know, you must quit. <laughs> you're not going to be comfortable, and then yeah. you're not going to be able to hit as many targets as you would. Right. Right. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. Man. Right, like I say, it, 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 the parallels is, is is like every every step of the way, everything is it parallels golf. And I say, and I say that because at one time we probably thought that there weren't that many African Americans playing golf. Little did we know that in the '60s, late '50s, '60s, it was tons of black folks playing golf. They just couldn't play it in the mainstream because mm -hmm. we wouldn't see them on TV and, and that sort of thing. So. So it parallels. I'm sure. Right, right. I'm sure there were probably more African Americans playing. I mean, playing trap shooting back in the '60s than there are now. I would guess. Oh yeah, yes, it, it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was on the NSTA, the WSTA, DSTA circuit. Um, you know, you go to any other club that were having one of those events, and you know, it, it would probably be a hundred, you know, a hundred guys there or mm -hmm. more. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it'd take two days to get all done. <laughs> but as, as those guys get older, 
you know, their kids and their grandkids, you yes. know, their games, they kind of, you know, they kind of lost interest. Right. At least that's, that's my, you know, my observation. Right. But, you know, it was not really handed down. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. Because we, we became a... Uh... But, you know, and then looking on the, looking on the other side, you know, I see guys, you know, bringing their grandkids. Okay. You know, to an event and, you know, and not only their kids, but their grandkids, you know, I, I've been on a squad where you had three generations of okay. a family out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's Father, awesome. mother, son, and daughter. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, or the grandkids, the son and, and the grandkids. Yeah, right. that's how we get it started. You know, right. we generate interest with our own, you know, like when you had that family business, one of the kids won't want to do it, and then the other one probably will. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how it all started. Oh yeah, yeah. Generate yeah. that interest. Right, in and, and 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 it appears so much that that uh, in our community, sp sporting events uh, become become where they usually skip a generation. Like like mm -hmm. those, you know, they, they just for what and, and I think probably because bas basketball, football became so popular with our kids in the in their in the seventies, eighties, and, and of course into the you know later part of the sixties where it became real popular that we started getting away from everything else and then the money started getting good. <laughs> mm. Right, right, right. So that's all they, everybody wanna do. It's because they they want to stay they want their kid to be the next great superstar. Mm -hmm. Then you had them Harlem Globetrotters too. Yeah, right. Then the <laughs> Played all of the tricks and running with the ball. Yeah, so right. So that so there weren't there weren't and really and, and like I said without without knowing you there aren't folks who we can point to and say okay the majority of us and say wow he does that he he does trap shooting I like to check that out because it just is not something that we see mm -hmm. and you know how we do. That's, yeah, yeah, you know we are in our community. We don't see it. We ain't doing it. <laughs> right, right. And we definitely can't have uh, guns in the community. <laughs> <laughs> no, not if not if somebody over hadn't tried it out already. Yeah, <laughs> and, and let us know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's that's wonderful. So, so uh, you, nobody in your family ever passed it down to anybody else. You didn't pass it down to anybody in your family either. You said your dad did you? Uh, well, no, I, you know, my son, he, he went out, uh, I think he was about 14 or 15, mm -hmm. you know, he, he tried it. He was pretty good at it. He was like his, his like his dad. He was, he was a natural, <laughs> but you know, he didn't stay interested because his, his friends wasn't doing it. So right. Gotta do with his friends. Of course. And, yeah, and, and right peer pressure, you right. And they and they and there it is right there. If, if people want to do what their friends yeah, do so and not what their do. parents do. Yeah. Well, maybe grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever they come, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, well yeah, because look, huh? You make me one when they had that ladies annual. I might want to uh get a few of my friends and come on out there. Hey, you you welcome it welcome anytime. You're welcome anytime. Right. And and, and I right, I'll tell you this. When yeah. when you have some stuff coming up, shoot me an email with that information. I'll put it on my Facebook page so we can uh get some uh publicity for it. Maybe get some new folks to come check it out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we do um, you know, we do have some things coming up in uh next month in in October. Uh, we do have one um, ATA event on October 17th. And then after that, and you know, it's not all serious competitive. We have, we have, we call them fun sheets mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. you know, you can win, you know, a, a turkey, you know, or they call them meat shoots. You know, mm -hmm. you might win a slab of ribs or, or whatever. Sound good, sound right, good. No. And it's it, all is all it is is about fun, right? You know, right. And we come up with some, you know, some unusual things like like uh, there's there's one event called an ant Okay. And you line, <laughs> you know, fifteen or twenty guys up. You throw one target out here. The guy shoots. If he misses, the next guy shoots. Hits it. The first guy out. 
Okay. You know. Wow. And and if he hit it and, and there's still enough peace and a third hits it, the other two got out. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and so everybody shoot at the same target, but not at the same time. Wow. <laughs> no, but it, if you shoot at the same time as somebody else shoot, you're out. You're out. So, so you gotta you gotta patient and hope God as doing shooting don't let that target out too far. Right. Right. But, you know, if you get out too far, ain't nobody gonna hit it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's wonderful. Right. Mm. right. So, like I said, let me let me know. You know, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm gonna be perusing your uh, website, yeah. and your Facebook page, and then we can share that information. Get another source to share it, so maybe we can uh, fan some interest in, in uh, folks that may may want to do it. May want to see what it's about and get out there and try it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So, struck my curiosity. Yeah. We're always looking for, you know, trap shooter, who trap shoot somebody, you know, want to get interest in it. Yeah. Like I said, and, and, you know, since we're part of the travel league from January to December, you know, it's, it's one month, you know, you don't have to make every one of them, but, you know, and it's, it's 50 targets. You, you come in anytime between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And to shoot 50 targets probably takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. At the I guess so. I'm missing them so, all. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we have we have a lot of guys, what we call shooting scoop. They come in because they got something to do that day. Uh -huh. They might come in early, you know, shoot their 50 targets, pack them, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. You ain't hear me, do get it, Come in late. <laughs> no, no. What did you say? I said, I said, you didn't hear me, did you? No, you got to I guess it will be uh, 10 minutes for uh, me because I'll be the missed all 50. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do like that's what it is. Right. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you never uh, know. She might be a natural at it. You never know. You're yeah, right. You never know. You're right. So you got any more questions? That's right. That's right. Uh, that's fine, Jason. I really enjoyed you. Because I'm telling you, you, you have piqued my curiosity. And I'm scared of guns. But when you made it sound interesting like that and, and, and talked about how much fun it could be. Yeah. That... It, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to share with the folks? Uh, Century Gun Club, 8375 West Newburgh Road in Carlton, Michigan. Come on out uh, and see us. Yeah. Any given weekend. All right. Very good. It's, uh, and, and there's, uh, would it be feasible to call before you come or no? Or does it matter? Uh, no, we're open from uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday. And right now, Saturday and Sunday, uh, I think next year we might go to a every other weekend schedule. But, okay. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. All right, cool. Cool. All Since right. No appointment necessary. <laughs> okay. That sounds really good, Jason. Right. Yeah, right. Well, look, I want to thank you for joining with us and sharing this story. It's the sharing your, your passion, really. It's the, mm -hmm. That's interesting. And before we get out of here, we uh, you served in the military? Yes, United States Army. All right. And and you were a Detroit police officer, retired. Yes, 27 years. 27 years. I just wanted to thank you for your service in both of those arenas because it takes a special person to do that kind of work. Yes, it does. And, and, and do it and not get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and was able to retire. Woo, ain't that the best promotion we can get? Right, right. <laughs> All right. So we. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we, th we thank you for coming and sharing, with, sharing your story with us. Remember, send me that information and I'll make sure I get it posted on my page as well. So we have another source out there people can go look at if they don't remember. Century Gun Club Facebook page, Century Gun Club uh, website, if you want more information. Uh, all right, thank you, Jason. All right, thank you for your all right, time. Thank you. Yeah, thank take, you for having me. You, no problem. You're welcome. You take care now. See, that wasn't painful. Okay. <laughs>